everyone, I'm Kim Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. The Vatican has announced that Pope Francis will be visiting the United Arab Emirates in February of 2019. The Vatican said the Pope will participate in the International Interfaith Meeting on Human Fraternity after receiving an invitation by the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi. The Vatican published this press release announcing a papal trip to Abu Dhabi on February 3rd through the 5th, 2019. Pope Francis plans on participating in the International Interfaith Meeting on Human Fraternity. The visit is in response to an invitation by the Catholic Church and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Mohammed bin Zayed, the Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces. He visited the Pope in 2016 at the Vatican. The theme of the trip has been chosen as Make Me a Channel of Your Peace after St. Francis of Assisi. The goal is for Pope Francis's visit to spread the peace of God within the hearts of all people. He will continue into religious dialogue like he did during his visit to Egypt in April 2017. Additionally, the logo represents the colors of both the Vatican's and United Arab Emirates' flag. The white and yellow is for the Holy See, and the red, green, and black represents the UAE. The olive branch in its mouth is the symbol of the country as a herald of peace. A majority Muslim population, around 10% of the citizens of the UAE are Catholics. In 2007, they entered into full diplomatic relations with the Vatican. Pope Francis will be the first pope to visit this country. The February 3rd through the 5th trip will take place less than a week after Pope Francis returns from his January 23rd through 28th visit to Panama for World Youth Day. In news from around the country, during a media briefing December 5th, Jeannie Mancini, March for Life president, announced that one-time Planned Parenthood Clinic Director Abby Johnson will be among the speakers during the 2019 March for Life rally January 18th on the National Mall in Washington. The theme for this year's march is unique from day one, pro-life is pro-science. Mancini said this year's events will focus on the scientific discoveries that have led to new understanding about life in the womb. She added that science and technology are on the side of life in large part because they show the humanity of the child at a very young age, including a baby's heartbeat at six weeks and blood tests to know a baby's gender at seven weeks. The March for Life rally is set for noon at 12th Street Northwest on the National Mall between Madison Drive and Jefferson Drive. Afterward, participants will gather for the official march on Constitution Avenue between 12th and 14th Street and make their way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Details of the events can be found online at marchforlife.org. In news from Rome, the scientific community is still reeling over the recent revelation that a Chinese scientist reportedly altered the DNA of two twin babies. Rome Reports talked with the scientific director of the Pope's Hospital in Rome about the repercussions of this type of procedure. The scientific community was shocked when Chinese scientist He Jiangui reported that he had altered the DNA of two twin babies to prevent them from carrying the AIDS virus. Most scientists have labeled this experiment excessive, and it has triggered a great ethical debate. Bruno Dalla Piccola is a geneticist, and since 2010, he has been the scientific director of the Bambino Gesù Hospital, known as the Pope's Hospital. He explains that this will have consequences. On a scientific level, we are accustomed to the fact that when there is a barrier and that barrier is crossed, the line is pushed further away. Now there is great uncertainty because unfortunately what governs our discipline is economic interest and it's likely that these interests will lead to more experiments of this type. Technique used to do this experiment with embryos is called CRISPR. This cuts out part of the DNA and is reinserted again when it is genetically modified. The professor explains that the efficacy is not definitive and that it could cause unknown side effects over time. The problem with these scissors is that they cut DNA from tens or hundreds of different parts of the genome. Each cut made in the genome can cause mutations or alterations in the DNA structure or function. Embryos have become a something and not a someone. The latter is the way we believe that they should be considered. World legislation, even in China, prohibits the genetic alteration of an embryo. This is because it impedes the natural development of the genome, which should remain unaltered. Bruno Dalla Piccola explains that the ambition to discover the most advanced techniques causes scientific researchers to lose their humility. From a practical point of view, it is a fantasy to think that if I modify a part of genome, I will create the perfect individual or a person free of problems. Unfortunately, today research lacks humility. There is a term that is used a lot in genetics, and it is playing God. We researchers must realize that we are not God and come back down to earth. 
And finally, in the news, at an ecumenical service in Westminster Abbey to celebrate the contribution of Christians in the Middle East, Prince Charles of Wales spoke of how he was deeply moved by the testimony of Iraqi sister Luma Kudhar at a Dominican sister of St. Catherine of Siena. The prince told the more than 1,000 people gathered for the service how in 2014, as extremists advanced on the Christian town of Karakush, Sister Luma got behind the wheel of a minibus full of her fellow Christians and drove the long and dangerous road to safety. Like the 100,000 other Christians who were forced from the Nineveh Plains that year, they left behind the ruins of their homes, churches, and communities. Prince Charles said Sister Luma told him movingly of her return to Nineveh with her fellow sisters three years later and of their despair, the utter destruction they found there. But like so many others, he said they put their faith in God and today the tide has turned. Nearly half of those displaced have gone back to rebuild their homes and their communities. The prince said he was deeply humbled meeting Sister Luma and all Christians who face persecution, endure, and overcome, saying that theirs is an act of supreme courage, of a refusal to be defined by the sin against you, of determination that love will triumph over hate. In his address, Prince Charles also expressed his hope that Christians and Muslims will again live together in peace, saying that throughout history they have shown that it is possible to live side by side as neighbors and friends. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.